Well, happy Easter, everybody. Soon it will be Easter, and this will be our last show before then. The dog dressed up, little Easter bunny costume. Um, today we're going to be working on a new solution for our Raspberry Pi arcade system. Um, since we're putting it into a two-player mode, there's not enough GPIO pins to satisfy the 21 positions that we need for all the flippers and coin returns and everything that we decided to put on it. I think um, there's only 18 GPIO pins that are allowed, but I'm not real sure on that. But I know we're going to need at least 21. So we've decided to hack a USB keyboard and turn it into an input device. Now you can buy something called an iPack that does that for you, but it's $65 and this is a do-it-yourself show, so we figured we'd do it now. So hang out with us today as we go ahead and uh, make our own little DIY iPack input device for Raspberry Pi or any main cabinet for that matter and get as many input channels as you want uh, from any combination of letters, numbers, and characters. Okay guys, coming up next. Say something Shadow. Say something Shadow. <laughs> So we finally got our box in from Hong Kong. These are some of the parts for the buttons and joysticks for our arcade that we're building here. I was just looking at uh, the sizes that are needed for the holes and I thought I'd film it. Let me show you everything I bought first and then I'll talk about what I plan to do here. So these two here are the uh, joysticks and we'll open those up in a minute. And you can see that there's a bunch of micro switches and parts that come with them down here. And then these are the buttons that we ordered here. And we ordered, well, I kind of forget, but the reason why we had to get these um, from Hong Kong was because we wanted the color buttons and we couldn't find a source except for Hong Kong so we were kind of forced to go with that so it took a little more time than normal to get them but you can see we have purple and green and yellow red and um, it just makes it easier to identify the buttons when you're using them on a gameplay. And here's the other red one that I was playing around with here. This is a one and inch, one and a half, one and a quarter inch hole here in this board. And I just did it with a spade bit to see how it would fit. Now these buttons are fairly shallow on this lip, and I'm not real happy with that and then it has the spring clips. I wasn't really paying attention that much when I purchased them. But uh, you know we're going to have to do a press fit in this hole. So one and a quarter is going to be too big so I'm going to go about one and an eighth and I think that'll be just fine for that. But the buttons themselves feel really good. The micro switches feel nice. So four, eight, 12, 16 buttons. That should be enough for two players. And then we also got these, and this is a one and two player button. Now this is the one for the one single player. And then there's another one around here somewhere that has a two player man on it. And you know, this will be at the top of the cabinet. Now I like this design much better where this screws down in and then you have this nut on the back. And I was thinking that these were like that but they're not through the press fit. But we'll make these work. Um, but these are the ones I like better. And you can see the micro switch here. And you, these are three positions so you can do normally open or normally closed whatever way you wire these. And these are just um, normally open. Uh, and they have the two prongs, so you know when you push to close. So we have uh, two, uh, 16 of these, and then two of these, and then the joysticks. 
let's look at the joysticks real quick here. You know, I forgot to mention that we purchased these from uh, this company here, Arcade Spare Parts, Hong Kong. And all of these buttons were a total of around $40 with shipping. So that was pretty good. Now, as you can see, there's a fairly large spring inside this one. This base is actually bigger than I anticipated. And um, I'm going to have to make sure that my drawings reflect that I have that much room because that, that's a real fatty on the bottom there. Let me get my tape measure. So I'm going to have to allow, you know, four inches this way. And about two and three eighths inches this way. And it really doesn't matter which way is up. These micro switches fit in around here. There's a bunch of screws that come with this. Here's a micro switch here. So these holes, let's see if I can do this here. It would fit in there like that and then you can see how this bumps into it so depending on the position that you have these is where it would be up so you know all four of these go around here this is just a plate to cover up the hole once you put it in and the knob does come off so The construction feels really good. So that's what I was waiting for were these parts so that I could begin to finish the drawing on the console itself on the control panel. And now that I have these I can go ahead with that. So I just wanted to show you that these parts came in and uh, I'm going to go ahead and start fitting them. So, hang out for that. I guess before I pop this apart, I should show you what I'm taking apart. This is a, a Dell mini keyboard. It's not real big with the USB. So this is the style I'm taking apart. Um, in case you're wondering, it is a model SK8115. Set this part aside. Here's a look, look inside. There's three screws here that hold the circuit board in. These contact strips right here contact the two acetate sheets. There's two of them here. And they're laminated together, spot-walled in certain spots. 
so when you press a key that makes the two touch together because there's a small layer of spacer in between each dot and then it sends a signal up to um, two of these pins that are encoded by the circuit board to find out what pins we need for our main cabinet for the individual keys we're going to take this circuit board with the USB and do some investigative work with these pins shorting it out from this side to this side to find our combinations now I thought I should add that you could certainly trace um, where these wires go like if you wanted to find out you know the A key for instance or a key it's over here say this dot here you could trace both acetates until it comes up here one side is going to come up to one of these pins on this side and then the other layer is going to come up to this side so you know the combination of the two would give you that key over there whereas a key over here would be you know a different pin over here and a different pin over here and the two combinations make up that particular key so that's what we're going to find out next uh, you could trace this if you wanted but I think that's a hard way instead we're going to go ahead and take this and just um, start shorting these out and figure out what they are manually uh, with a computer and a just a simple text editor so we'll do that next okay you can see how I fed some cat5 solid wire up through these little holes here there's the, the cat5 wire there and um, let's flip this over So I, I still have to do the same for this other side, but uh, there's all my connections. Okay, let me continue on with that. Okay, now that I've showed you the buttons, I just wanted to show you that I went ahead and changed this control panel. I had to change the hole size as well as Steve and I went through this and decided what buttons we needed and didn't. So this top part is now finished. And this will be the way that it cuts. This will be one of the first pieces that we cut. The holes here and here are the joystick. And then there's three uh, ABC buttons, ABC here, and then a start and a start here. So I just wanted to show you that real quick, that that's our button layout. We haven't uh, finished the front of this yet, but that's to come. And then also we're going to manually put a button in the side here and the side over here for like pinball or whatever so um, we can also use those buttons if we want to do special programming for different types of arcade games okay so I wanted to show you the rig that we came up with for the USB port next well we took some time and we figured out every single wire combination on this little board that I was uh, working on earlier and what we did is we went through the wires and we hooked it up manually and then we opened up a notepad application plugged in the USB port and then started writing down all the combinations and on these papers are all the combinations if you touch the two wires together and just as a demonstration we brought over the joystick and plugged in the four accesses and as you can see there's a notepad application running and when I pull down X will be for the down W for up right is 2 and S is left and you can do combinations of the two by um, going to the, the opposite um, what do I want to say in between so that's XS uh, 2X to W and WS like that 
Okay guys, so that's it for this one. Next time you see us, we're going to be cutting some parts out for sure. We're going to go right to the CNC machine. I know a lot of guys have been waiting on this one. I'm going to explain the machine to you and hopefully we'll get around to actually cutting the control panel and making it all work. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care of yourself. Hey guys, this is Steve. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and be sure to rate and comment. See ya.